for much, much less, you could buy yourself a very, very fast bicycle. After Chris Boardman won Olympic gold on his Lotus, the company has decided to put it into production. Thanks. The trouble is, it costs £5,000. And anyway, we don't come to motor shows to see bicycles. We come to see cars like this, the bike's bigger brother, the Lotus Esprit Sport 300. Now, this is distinguishable from the lesser Esprit because it has flared wheel arches, huge, fat Oz racing wheels and a giant rear spoiler. And the reason it has these things, along with looks that can make your eyeballs wobble, is because this is a road-going version of Lotus's racer, the car that they entered in this year's Le Mans. Naturally, there's a price penalty. A normal Esprit will cost you £46,000. This one is £65,000. A normal Esprit will take you to 160 miles an hour. This one takes you to 170, and the reason is, under here, they've managed to squeeze 302 brake horsepower out of its titchy 2.2-litre engine and still leave enough room for some golf clubs. But why on earth you'd want to play golf if you had a car like this? I've no idea. It's been a time of upheaval for Lotus just recently because in the summer their parent company, General Motors, sold the entire outfit lock, stock and barrel to Bugatti, a company that most people thought went out of business about a thousand years ago, but now they're back. This is the EB110 GT. It's made in a factory just down the road from Ferrari's place in northern Italy. It has a three and a half litre V12 engine, which is force fed by not one, not two, not three, but four turbochargers. The end result is a top speed of 212 miles an hour, making this, by some considerable margin, the fastest car at the show. Now, I've driven one, albeit briefly, and I can tell you that it's demonstrably and noticeably faster than anything else I've ever been in, Aston Martin Vantage included. Also, if you go around asking people who are too young to know who the Beatles are, what their favourite car at the show is, they will all tell you. The Bugatti. A motor show wouldn't be a motor show without a liberal helping of concept cars. But just how likely are these visions of the future going to be reality? Among this year's offerings are two from Vauxhall, who clearly think that motoring should be fun. The Tigra and the Tracker, both based on their best-selling Corsa. The Tigra is a cocky coupe, like a concertina Calibra, while the Tracker is a diddy off-roader. Looks a lot like a foreshortened Frontera. Vauxhall have brought them to Earl's Court for evaluation by asking the public what they think. And if, as I think it will be, the answer is a resounding yes, we could soon be seeing Tigras outside every wine bar and trackers at every sailing club. Renault are offering their Raccoon, a futuristic off-roader with a sliding roof that doubles as a door and gives you the feeling you're sitting in a helicopter. There are no windscreen wipers. If it rains, you simply switch on the ultrasonic heater, which literally evaporates the raindrops. And if you're not sufficiently diverted by that, there's a satellite navigation system and an electronic personal assistant with computer, telephone and fax. For maximum clambering ability, the wheels sprout from four giant legs connected to a huge hinge in the middle. The raccoon's party piece, however, is that it also takes to water. Switch on the two hydro jets in the back, and it can be driven and steered like a giant jet ski. Amazingly, the whole thing was designed in virtual reality, in other words, on a computer. A much quicker process than modelling, which means you can get from nowhere to the finished car in just 13 months. Somehow, however, I don't see this one making it into the reality of production. This one, on the other hand, really will make it through into production. It's the Audi aluminium space frame concept car, and it's the forerunner of a new generation of luxury Audi models. Unveiled for the first time in the UK here at the show, the cars generated enormous interest in the industry. 
We've had aluminium bodies before. The Range Rovers had one for 20 years. But this is the first time they've used aluminium from the outset in the design of the construction of the whole vehicle. The car it replaces in the UK, the Audi V8, never sold very well. And when it launches at the end of 1994, it'll cost around £40,000, but it could last you a lifetime. Why aluminium? Well, obviously it's light and that saves fuel. It crashes well and that means it meets future safety standards. But most important of all, it's easily recyclable. Aluminium really is a wonderful material. You never lose the energy you put into creating it. You simply melt it down and reform it into something else. You can draw it as thin as a human hair. You can build it into Concorde and fly the Atlantic. Unlike some previous concept cars, this one really does look like the shape of the future. Ever wondered what happens to concept cars? When